Thank you, Beth. Good afternoon. I hope everybody had a good uh, lunch. Um, now, this is a door to balloon time in STEMI care. This is one of the subjects that I love to do. Um, every year I keep talking about uh, STEMI, but uh, you know, a couple of updates that I would like to uh, give. I have nothing to disclose. Um, if you just go over what is a STEMI rate in the United States, just to tell you what a STEMI is, ST segment elevation myocardial infarction and non-STEMI would be non-ST segment myocardial infarction. The difference is how you take care of this patient. For a STEMI patient, the time matters. It's called as time as myocardium. But if you see here what has happened over years and what you see now is the number of uh, patients actually is going down and because of the patient presentation and same as the mortality is also going down in these patients. Um, the treatment for these patients at the beginning used to be what we call as thrombolytic therapy. Why the vessel of the ST segment means you have EKG changes, coronary artery blocks, acutely blocks and it's full filled with clot. So in that situation, what do you do? You have to give what's called as a clot buster. You can give medication, which is aspirin, and the other medication which we will discuss, Plavix and a newer antiplatelet therapy. Along with that, we used to give what's called as a thrombolytic therapy, but as things moved on, what happened is, we started thinking we can take this patient to the cath lab, and one of the treatment is to do balloon angioplasty and stent. And that is when uh, the timing came into equation uh, that what time, what's the time that you give so that you can take the patient to the lab and open the artery so that the myocardium or the so-called muscle, heart is a muscle pump, will remain alive and not dead. And that timing was 90 minutes. And what has happened is with the, a lot of things uh, changing, the time has gone down from 96 minutes to now almost to 60 minutes. And why did this happen? Is so many of the studies showing that it's not the time, maybe not 90 minutes, could be less than that. One of the important study was that came out in New England Journal and they did various things. How can we go down on the timing? And one of them was that when the patients are picked up from home, the emergency um, ER is activated. The ER then activates the cardiac cath lab that uh, who the team members uh, come in and that way the activation time decreases and because of all this what is called as they have put various uh, key strategic places if you see there if you had your uh, ER physician um, activating the cath lab before the patients arrive versus the ambulance will take the patient directly to the cath lab there's another one where there is a, you know, the cath lab team is in, uh, the team is in-house. If any of these uh, various factors, if you see number of strategies, uh, if you have one strategy, two or three or four strategies that are, uh, the number of time actually went down, which is on the uh, most right hand side to less than 90 minutes. And this is what they said, pre-intervention and post-intervention. What is post-intervention means that you have any of these strategies available in your uh, hospital and if you had any of those strategies available, your timing definitely went way below. So what is the improvement in door to balloon time from 2005 to 2010 right now they are going to less than 90 minutes which is closer to 70 minutes or so so now the question always comes how low can we go we know 90 minutes was the time people are saying now maybe 60 minutes is the time how low can we go so this is one of the important paper that came out last year which is saying door to balloon time and mortality among patients undergoing primary pci are we changing mortality in patients by decreasing the time to less than 90 minutes and this is what it showed that we might have changed the timings. If you see on the yellow bar, it's come down all the way to almost uh, less than 70 minutes. This is the time, the door to balloon time. But what has happened to mortality? It's a flat line, the purple line. No change in mortality. Essentially, it's just around 4.6 to 4.7. So it's telling us, I think we don't have to get gung-ho and keep uh, you know, going behind this, uh, saying that we have to get door to balloon time to less than 60 minutes or so.
as long as you have your intervention in place that means you have a strategy in place that the, when the patient arrives you have a system that whether the ER physician calls the cath lab attending whether they call the cath lab team or the ambulance calls the cath lab team directly whatever it is if you have a system in place and you know your patients are being taken care of, within 90 minutes your mortality is good which is less than that is in hospital mortality and that is 30 day mortality which is still around 10 percent which has not changed as long as you have the strategy in place so we know that for clear you need to have cath lab that is functional and you to have this kind of strategy in place so that if there is an acute mi there is a team that will take care of the patients what have the recent trials showed saying what works in patients who present with myocardial infarction one of the important thing was prophylactic pci Patient comes, you have one artery that's completely blocked, you take care of it. Patient has 80-90% lesion in other arteries, do you take care of it? And this is one trial showed, yes, you should. What is the best anticoagulation and various things? What are the newer antiplatelet agent, which is tricagular prasugril, do they work? They do work. And giving um, IV antiplatelet, which is epsiximab, does it work? It does work. And when they come with the MI, there's a lot of clots, which uh, I told you. The question is, how can you do what we call as thrombectomy or take this clot out? There are various devices. One trial that showed that it's better is AngioJet. And various ways of doing intervention. Can we go femoral axis or radial intervention? This trial did show by doing acute MI radially, it does decrease. And other thing is using IV metaprolol. And you might have done your PCI, still there is myocardial death. Would that repair my AMI showed that myogenesis can happen if you give bone marrow cells. And this is what does not work. Just to show you a case of a 66-year-old male who came with um, acute myocardial infarction, actually presented to the ER with chest pain, and this is what is EKG. You see the ST segment elevation all over the place, and we will tell you why he has such massive ST segment elevation. Past medical history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, only taking uh, hydrochlorothiazide. So this is how he presents to the cath lab. If you can see there, his EDP that was very high, EDP almost was like 30. And when we do this LV gram, essentially there's no movement of ant anterior wall and apex. This is his right coronary artery. There is a lesion in the mid, if you can see, right here. That's why you don't see a good flow. So that's right coronary artery disease and important. Since the patient had anterior ST elevation, we knew he had an LADMI. So we go with the guide. He has circumflex, which again has disease. There's a left main disease. And this is where this uh, RCA, which had a disease, that means the RCA is collateralized from the circumflex. Essentially, the guy has left main, three vessel disease, LAD completely closed, and this patient actually was talking to us as he was getting to the room. And this is what his LAD looks like. There's no flow in the LAD. But his RCA, which is totally occluded, which has a 95% lesion, is filling from the circumflex. And as we are doing the case, we have the wire, but if you see here, when we wire, we wire into one of the branch because his LED is right here, very calcific. We could not get any wire down the LED. As we start, the, this happens, and this always happens. The patient comes, they just okay. Whenever we see an EF that's that low, EDP that's very high, as you're doing the case, next thing we know that they go into flash pulmonary edema, which is exactly what he did. We had to do urgent intubation, and by which time, his pressure starts going down. So this is a balloon pump we had to insert from the other side. This is now supporting the patient's heart. We were then able to get some kind of a flow in the LED and then still open the diagonal. This is a stent going in, another stent going in the LED. And this is how his, uh, he still has some left main disease. Circumflex has a good flow, but the flow in the LED is not normal, which we can tell you why, because this is probably late presentation. He already has had some myocardial damage. That is why he does not have a good flow in this case. 
in the situation where you know patient has uh, crashed on you and your, his blood pressure is very low what we call is uh, almost like a cardiac shock situation you would like to go and take care of this uh, vessel this is exactly what the primary trial had shown not in the situation of shock but if you see multiple lesion and if your flow is abnormal just take care of the other vessel this is what was done rca had uh, two stents done and this was his EKG post procedure when he actually arrived to CCU. He uh, recovered and was able to go home. So this exactly could just go over these things which is primary trial which uh, is what it showed that enrolled and what patients were followed up that no preventive PCI versus no preventive PCI. What it essentially showed was cardiac death if you see a no preventive PCI versus preventive PCI that somebody if has had preventive PCI the co composite and uh, cardiac death MI refractory angina everything everything was lower and this trial uh, has been discussed in the past and what this horizons AMI trial uh, showed that anticoagulation wise what is anticoagulation that you are going to use when you are doing these cases heparin versus a direct thrombin inhibitor which is bivalvuridin and this trial showed that bivalvuridin is definitely better and that DES which is a paclitaxel eludic stent taxes this is a second uh, first generation stent which was used in this trial better um, compared to the bare metal stent and the other thing that definitely works in the MI situation would be that patients we all know Plavix is the treatment of choice to give, give to the patient but the newer antiplatelet agent which is Pasogril versus Clopidogrel definitely showed better outcome in the stubby uh, in our you know uh, Timitriton study when they compared it to Clopidogrel in the STEMI group and the same thing also with Ticagrelor. What did examination trial show? This is always a question that when you do STEMI when there is lot of thrombus should a DES be used or should a bare metal stent be used? And this is a trial which actually showed compared to bare metal EES which is a third generation DES. Uh, Everlumumus uh, eluting stent when they compared it what did they show that it is comparable and more important most important thing was that it has lower restenosis which we all know DES do have lower restenosis but it is safe that stent thrombosis whether it is uh, definite stent thrombosis or probable stent thrombosis everything was uh, same this is what um, uh, you know other th that newer strength that has come into the mar uh, market and we will actually be part of this uh, trial that is coming to Sinai that what is the other thing that's important in the setting of MI is that there is a lot of thrombus. While you are stenting, which we also I showed you in our case, that later on the flow goes down. Why does the flow go down? Is that you have a plaque, you have thrombus. When you go there and then when you have a stent, you go with high pressure. It's called as a toothpaste effect that you go with a high pressure and inflate the stent. What is going to happen to that thrombus as well as the plaque? It's going to pro, you know, protrude inside and just go distal. And how can that be pre prevented, what we call as a distal embolization or slow flow, is by having maybe a different kind of a stent. And this is a newer stent which is uh, M guard stent it's called. It is uh, a thin strut as well as the way the stent is made that it will prevent what is called it's a self expand though it's on the balloon, it will self expand and it will prevent what is called as distal embolization of this and this was already shown in that MGAR trial that if they had this the, the, it, right now it's a bare metal stent it definitely decreases distal embolization and how can you say that it decreases def, uh, distal embolization that electro EKG changes are better means your ST segment goes down um, significant compared to your regular stent it's the same and uh, also they did the MRI sub study which showed the infarct size was better and the other trial is opposition which they have opposition 2 and we are now part of the opposition 3 which is uh, uh, will be doing in Sinai. Other thing is aspiration thrombectomy you do see a lot of when there is a lot of clot one thing that you do is you aspirate the thrombus you aspirate the thrombus give proper anticoagulation give proper antiplatelet therapy and then you do the right stent. 
and thrombus aspiration which was shown here in the TAPAS trial using angiojet was that the myocardial blush grade as well as the compared uh, was better when uh, in acute myocardial infarction patient. Then comes can we use intravenous uh, antiplatelet. What the antiplatelet that we are giving is oral, the three medications that I mentioned, which is aspirin, pasoglil or ticagrelor. Can we give anything intravenous and does it work? Several studies have shown it works and one of the studies that it show it works is this epsiximab, which is a platelet 2B3A inhibitor. Platelet has various um, receptors and one of the receptor which is a f uh, responsible for the for final pathway of the platelet aggregation and therefore clot formation is uh, 2B3A and that is inhibited by epsiximab and what it showed that if the intracoronary epsiximab if it was given was definitely better in these patients. And in infuse AMI trial, what did they do? If you see here, they used a special balloon. What is this bubble? Through the balloon, they gave this medication. And what they found was patients who got aspiration, thrombectomy, followed by IC, which is intracoronary epsiximab, in this trial, followed by, of course, they got the stent, did better compared to who did not get any of those uh, uh, therapy. Which axis is better, radial versus femoral, um, when doing acute myocardial infarction? This trial rival, which was presented last year, which showed that definitely that uh, radial axis is better only because it decreases non-cardiac bleeding. And that is why, the, by decreasing the bleeding, that radial intervention is better if that is uh, appropriately can be done. Uh, giving IV metoprolol to patients before they arrive to the cath lab, does it work? And this study did show that it does work by showing patients who, are, um, who have MI and they had better TIMI flow if they had uh, IV metoprolol beforehand. Similarly was shown by MRI that their LV function was better. Other question is, you did everything, patients still will have myocardial damage. How can we prevent this myocardial damage that you can inject patients' own bone marrow cell or what is called as endothelial progenitor cells? And did this uh, help? Repair AMI definitely showed that compared to placebo, if you give the bone marrow cells of the patient, um, either intracoronary or some of the time, some trials used intravenous. And uh, in that situation, how do you do? You f f looked at their LVEF and wh who had the highest benefit was patient who had their EF that was less than 50% to begin with. So compared to placebo, death, recurrent MI, revascularization was better in a group who received bone marrow cells. Several trials have been shown other than the repair MI, the red are the one that showed benefit, the whites are the one that showed that there's no benefit, so it's still controversial, can cardiac uh, stem cell therapy work? So we know what works and what does not work in uh, STEMI uh, is one of the trial which was a recently presented taste trial showed that it did not, uh, doing thrombectomy did not work. Though earlier I showed that thrombectomy with angiojet did work, this, they used a different kind of a thrombectomy here. And when the patients come, like I showed you in this case, we used IABP. They did a randomized trial of using IABP and showed no difference in this patient. In fact, the trial had to be uh, stopped beforehand. So this was thrombus aspiration taste trial. Uh, thrombus aspiration was done by a different catheter, showed no difference. But even to this day, while we are doing uh, acute myocardial infarction patients, if we see a lot of thrombus, we definitely do the aspiration. Percutaneous LV assist device, which uh, ha uh, has been shown in uh, elective cases that they do help, but IABP, Tandem Heart and Impella, Pablo went over all this uh, with you guys. Does this help in acute myocardial infarction cases? And let's look at the data. And this was the CRISP AMI trial. They took all anterior myocardial infarction that came and they randomized patient to di direct PCI, do the um, MR case like you would have normally done versus they randomized them to IABP. There was no difference and the, um, with survival or with the 
um, so the LV function. The same with the infarct size. And what was this uh, shock IAB, uh, IABP shock trial investigator showed the same that there was no difference when control arm versus IABP. Essentially saying that in the situation of shock or unstable patient that it does not um, help. What about PTVA? Does that help in uh, these patients? This was not in, uh, this was just in patients who were with cardiogenic shock but not true um, acute MIs but they showed no difference there. And PROTECT2, what was, uh, this was not in acute MI but high risk patients who are going intervention, same. IABP PCI versus Impella plus PCI at 30 days or at 90 days there was no difference in the patient's survival. Then they, this was a no, novel concept of what you do that you can you cause hypothermia. We know that hypothermia will help if the patient has out of hospital cardiac arrest. But if you do local hypothermia, can that help in re, uh, you know, recovery of myocardium? Again, they did this um, super saturated oxygen delivery and showed no benefit in patients uh, who had uh, acute MI. Then going to the term what is called as facilitated PCI. Would facilitated PCI help in the setting of patients who have myocardial infarction? If you see here that it did not show benefit. And what was facilitated PCI? If your cath lab was not open and you know you have to transfer a patient, uh, can you give like a 2B3A or can you give thrombolytic therapy and then transfer the patient to the cath lab and then they have cath and PCI and what did it show that it was not beneficial in fact probably had more um, uh, you know recurrent MIs or um, what did the facilitated PCI current guidelines are from the ACC AHA if you see there facilitated PCI means you can give any kind of fibrinolytic therapy considered as a reperfusion strategy when all of the following are present, patient are at high risk, PCI is not immediately available within 90 minutes or bleeding risk is low, you can consider that. Other thing is planned reperfusion strategy using full dose fibrinolytic therapy followed by immediate PCI may be helpful in certain high risk cases. Means the patient that I showed, patient had three vessel disease, you saw massive ST elevation. In that kind of case, if the patient, if the cath lab is not, uh, if the patient presents at 3 a.m., there will be some time for cath lab to arrive or you have to transfer this patient, you can give the fibrinolytic therapy thinking that you are going to reperfuse that patient. And very important is that routine cath after fibrinolytic therapy is no longer class 3. In the past, it was class 3 because those patients who got full dose fibrinolytic therapy had very high risk for bleed and would not go to the cath lab immediately. Uh, this is just an, uh, saying that intracoronary F6-imab versus intravenous F6-imab. Anybody, anything that's beneficial, both of them did not show to be beneficial if only you give through that um, uh, special balloon. And the other thing was 600 milligram of clopidogrel versus uh, F6-imab again showed no benefit here. This is another thing that always comes up is that patient presents late. Uh, chest pain for few days but uh, still has ST segment uh, elevation comes to the cath lab and what you find now has a totally occluded vessel. So th this was that trial that if you have a totally occluded vessel and what we call as that you miss the boat or the that you could not open the vessel within 90 minutes. What does it say? If the patient does not have any symptoms, you should not open the vessel. You have to then say medical therapy then do a stress test. If there is ischemia, then only you open. Or the indication for opening for late presentation of vessels only if the patient has symptoms like heart failure, arrhythmia, or ongoing chest pain. Otherwise, you don't do that because whether you open it or you give medical therapy, their survival was the same. So this is the most important slide of the entire talk where I'm going to say what did we learn today that the STEMI intervention from 2013 to 2014 is very important is that based on all this trial is that the system process has to be in place. 
and that is what is going to make a difference don't go on the clock oh it's 90 minutes 92 minutes uh, 78 minutes 88 minutes no you have a system in place and take care of every patient the same way and that's how you'll save lives and uh, bioiodine is good can you do multi-vessel PCI like I showed you? Yes, it is do, uh, good that you have done one vessel. There is another 95% lesion. You can go ahead and do it. In the past, it was class 3. You could not do another vessel intervention in the setting of MI. And you can use a newer antiplatelet agent, DES. Yes, it can be used, but the newer bare metal stents are also the, um, uh, in the pipeline. And IV beta blocker is a good thing. And thrombectomy before PCI. One trial said yes, one trial said no. It all depends on the operator, what they are comfortable with. And facilitated PCI is S, uh, yes. And IV apsiximab uh, can be given locally through the balloon of, like uh, it was shown with infused AMI. And stem cell therapy is again plus minus. But what is negative is the following things, that IABP, Impella, or tandem heart is a no-no and uh, same with the IV f 6 map so what very important is if by incorporating this plus with better intervention you do improve survival of all these patients this slide has been already shown by Dr. Sharma that because of this protocol system in place if you see here Mount Sinai recently got this uh, double star which is uh, for all cases, non-emergency cases, um, plus if you even if you take for emergency cases, if you see the to the statewide mortality is three, but for us is 2.35. Uh, just to say that why we have the lowest uh, mortality, why one what they go is they take all the patients, they take the risk factors, and how many patients survive, not in hospital at 30 days, and based on that, this double star is awarded to the. Uh, mm, to the institution and if you take in the entire state this was the first time that Mount Sinai ever got for all cases emergency cases as well as the elective cases and we are very proud to say that this achievement has happened and these are the various physicians you see the name who got the double star to say why we have been able to do that is um, because we work as a team yes physicians do a lot of work Okay, we do we do the take care of the patient, but we take care of the patient. We are focusing on the patient, focusing on the coronary artery. But as a team, who helps the patients in the room, outside the room, and uh, discharge the patient and make sure everything happens is the nurses. So we could not have achieved all this without the help of the nurses. <laughs> I don't have to say the technicians also. In other words. <laughs> But they do help a lot. So we always, myself and Dr. Sharma always believed in one thing is that how we learn a lot, we, um, learn a lot but once we know something, we always want to educate others. And that is why this symposium has seen so many lights. Uh, this is the 17th year and we want to keep doing this so that what we know we want to teach other people so that you learn from this take it to your individual institution and if you are able to do the same and save more lives so as a team we can do a better job thank you for your attention no. No. okay the question is there time for the question so I think I showed you that uh, true or false, door to balloon time is uh, 90 minutes, which is true, although a lot of studies. Oh. <laughs> what? Okay, what is a uh, stent uh, recommended after acute myocardial infarction? That's good. <laughs> At least I didn't give the answer. <laughs> okay, where's the next uh, speaker now? Right? Thank you.